everybody. It's Carrie, your friendly neighborhood makerspace librarian from the Rapid City Public Library, here today to walk you through our practical making craft for this month. We are going to be making a perpetual calendar, um, and it's got a lot of room in it for you guys to kind of design it however you'd like. So let's take a look to see what you've got in, uh, not your bags this, this time, but in your unconventional packaging. <laughs> okay. So you should have your wooden frame, uh, paint, paintbrush, you should have four golden hooks and then the months and then the cards that we're going to use for the days, um, and a pen, uh, a black permanent marker. And basically we're going to take that white paint and we're going to paint the inside of that kind of square. Um, and what I did is I kind of just went crazy in the middle, um, trying to keep it as even as possible. And I'll show you a little trick I used when it got close to the edges. Um, but I did have to put a couple coats on this. So when you get up close to the edges, because you have a flat brush, um, you can basically just kind of push it up right next to the edge and then smooth it along. It won't be perfect, um, but it seemed like kind of a pain to tape the whole thing off and, and this was an okay, an okay way for me to work around it. Kind of depends on how much of a perfectionist you are. Um, the slower you go at those edges, the smoother those lines will be and the more the paint will stick to the bottom of the tray and not the sides. Corners just kind of take it even slower. Don't worry if you have to go back over it a couple of times. push it in and then pull it down. And as you can see, like you can see all of my brush strokes because this is the, you know, this is the first, the first layer of paint. Um, it'll get a little smoother uh, the more layers you put on. And those edges will get a little easier to do as well. Okay, then I did the outside edges of the box. And again, in the middle, you can be kind of crazy. Um, and again, I didn't want to tape it off. Um, and so I'm using this kind of stroke always from the middle to the outside at a diagonal. Um, and when you do that, always going from the middle to the outside, um, it should keep the paint just on that edge and none of it on either the backing or the flat part of that, that framed edge. I'll show you in a second when I get finished with this. It's almost like you're painting in a chevron pattern. Um, again, you'll need a couple of coats on this outside part too, um, but I really like how the white and the natural ends up looking. I don't know if it's just after all the glitz and glamour of the holidays, something very simple kind of appeals to me. A little austere. And you can kind of press down with the flat of the brush to get all of the paint off of it, um, but you should have enough that you don't need to worry about wasting any. Like, go ahead and, and smooth it on there pretty thick. We'll still do a couple of coats. And then when you get all the way to the end, you can see how I've still got a pretty nice crisp line and I'll still see some of that kind of unpainted wood. Um, and we're just gonna do that to all four sides and then we're gonna go back over the middle again. So this is me putting that, starting that second coat so you can kind of see the difference. I mean, you shouldn't be able to see any more of the wood grain underneath and it'll make it so that the, the paint strokes aren't quite as splotchy as they were with that first coat. Okay, so once it's painted and it's dry, um, take one, you can see the back of these are, are empty if you want to draw your own months on, on there, um, but I'll use the printed side for this. Um, you kind of want to figure out where you want those to hang. And then the same thing, um, you're gonna have one set of numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, the first part of the day and zero through nine for the second part of the day, um, the date. Um, 
and and what we want to have is we want to figure out when your calendar is all set up where you want those to sit so i'm going to set mine in there kind of towards the middle and because these have the holes punched in them you can kind of see where you want them to be but when you look at your hook you can see that the part that screws into the edge has a drop to where either your date tag or your date number tag will stay um, and there's a bit of a drop where the hole punch is so you can see like there's a bit of distance between where the hole that we're going to screw that in is and the tag maybe half an inch it's not a lot but it's enough to make a difference so when you put this in here we're going to mark with a pencil where we want to kind of have those holes for those hooks I would look at where you want it to be and then go up about a half an inch. I'm going to start with the, the month tags. So that's where I want it and then I'm going to mark it above that. There we go. And then I'm going to do uh, the same thing with the bottom tag um, where I want it and then I'm going to mark it maybe a half an inch above that. There we go. And that will let me know where I want to screw those in. Um, actually, while I'm thinking about it, because these are kind of large hooks, um, they have a tendency to overlap if you put them too close together. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to make that distance a little bit wider between, um, between where the month goes and where the date goes. So I'm going to erase that beautiful thing about pencil and I'm gonna put it in I'm gonna drop it about a half an inch actually <clears throat> there we go and I'm eyeballing it um, because I'm okay with that if you know that things being a little out of sync is gonna bother you um, use a ruler okay so I'm gonna put that screw right where that dot is and pressing down I'm just gonna give it like a good turn clockwise um, and I'm pushing hard enough so that that turn should leave that hook standing by the time I get finished with it and then I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna give it a couple more turns pushing a lot of weight on it and then once it's about halfway through that backing you should just be able to take the hook and and screw it the rest of the way in without having to put so much pressure on it in the makerspace, we do have some hand drills and you are more than welcome to come in and use those to get started. Or if you happen to have a hand drill at home, um, these will go in without them. But if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can certainly come into the makerspace and we'll help you. And once you have all four of those put in, you should be able to put your date cards and your month cards and they should hang off of there pretty nicely. Um, you will notice that in the back, um, the hooks we got were a little longer than I expected them to be. Um, one thing you can do is uh, you can actually take um, an eraser. So like if you have one of those big pink ones, you can cut it into four pieces. Those can screw on the back to cover those up. Um, if it's going to go at the back of your desk, it might not bother you. If you wanted to hang it on the walls, it might. Well, I left the date cards blank so that you could draw in whatever type of numbering you wanted. And we have a lot of books that can help you do this. Um, this book of chalk lettering is super cool. It even goes through like flourishes and fancy bits and has a bunch of different examples of different fonts, including the numbers. Um, but we have lots of books on calligraphy in the library that can help you figure out what you want those numbers to look like, if you want to add some extra designs. Um, it's kind of up to you to do whatever you would like. Thanks for following along. I hope to see you back next month for another Practical Making.